grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Good morning and you're very welcome to our service of Holy Communion in this St. Peter's Church Monart on Trinity Sunday. We're delighted that you are joining with us today and we look forward to hopefully in the not too distant future all being together in our churches again soon. A sentence of scripture. Round the throne of God, day and night, they never cease to sing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We sing our opening hymn. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. 
Almighty God, our Amen. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sing Gloria in Excelsis. The first reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, beginning at verse 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We say together Psalm number 8. The words will appear on your screen. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him little lower than the angels, and crown him with glory and honour. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under his feet. 
all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea, O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading is read for us by Katie Sutton. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to Matthew chapter 28, beginning at verse 16. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. May I speak to you in the name of God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. John Wesley once said, Bring me a worm that can comprehend a man, and I will then show you a man who can comprehend the triune God. With that in mind, I shall now attempt to preach to you on this Trinity Sunday. Many greater minds than I have tried and failed to accurately explain the Trinity using language and metaphors that can be understood. The most famous of these on this land is St. Patrick, who used the shamrock to explain Father, Son and Holy Spirit, three separate persons of the Godhead. Similarly, water, or the chemical formula for water, H2O, has been used to try to help people understand the Trinity. H2O at room temperature is water. In extreme cold, it becomes ice, and in extreme heat, it becomes steam. However, regardless of its form, it always remains at, as H2O. But again, this was considered heretical by the early church. John Wesley used an image of three candles candles. He said, tell me how it is that in this room there are three candles and only one light, and I will explain to you the mode of the divine existence. Does that explain the Trinity? No. Wesley's point was that it was impossible to explain. When we start talking about the nature of our triune God, our words fall short. Our words can never define, confine, or pin down God. God is bigger than what we can ever conceive or imagine, which is why so often the church resorts to poetry, music, and art to express the inexpressible, in much the same way as lovers buy flowers for their loved one when words may fail. The word Trinity never appears in the Bible, yet in passages like our reading from the Great Commission in Matthew's Gospel, we read of baptising new followers of Jesus in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Similarly, in our reading from the second letter to the Corinthians, Paul bestows upon us the beautiful words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. While these words may not fully explain the exact nature of God, what they do say, however, is that at the very heart of God's own self is community. And it is a community of love, love of the Father for the Son, the Son for the Father, in the power of the Spirit. 
in this time of physical distancing to stop the spread of the coronavirus, we are discovering more about how deep our human longing is for community. What we miss most at this time is our friends and our family. The opportunity to see each other, kiss and hold each other, to break bread together in both home and in church. We humans love to be together. Being separated by the coronavirus has not broken that sense of communion. Across the church, people are finding ways to stay connected. Imperfect as they are, our new ways of joining together come from a deep longing, which is in the very heart of the Holy Trinity. On the whole, we're made for community, and we need others in order to flourish. I don't think I'm the only one to be impressed at how our community rallied around those who needed it when lockdown was first announced. All anybody had to do was ask, and there were multiple people willing to do whatever they could. Neighbours, family, friends, people. <laughs> people stepped up for others out of love and concern. And as you can see, I have my own little community here to mo this morning in our church. I hope that as our lives slowly begin to resume, that the sense of community and interdependence will not leave us. So may God, the Holy Trinity, bless you. And may this community of love at the heart of our God overflow into our churches, our homes and our neighbourhoods, loving us into life to play our part in the rebuilding our society and our world over the coming months and years. Amen. And may God bless all the precious and uh, people minding our young people when they reopen. Amen. Now, we affirm our faith together in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Called by the great God we worship, let us pray fervently for the church and for the world. We bring before you, O oh God, the needs of our church, particularly as we prepare to reopen our church buildings for worship. Revive and refresh us, teach and direct us, keep us all safe. Inspire all who preach, teach and gossip the good news 
and uphold all who suffer for their faith in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, O oh God, the particular problems of our age and culture. We pray for all who are suffering in our world due to coronavirus. Renew in us a commitment to community and mutual trust. Give a sense of value to all. Protect the vulnerable and help all who are in need at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, O oh God, the nurturing of our children and young people in their homes and through parenting, in schools and through teaching. We pray for all who are trying to teach young people at home and for their teachers who are having to do so at a distance. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We bring before you, O oh God, the hungry and the malnourished, the greedy and the complacent, for those who are ill and for those who care for them. We pray for all who suffer at the hands of racism. We remember George Floyd and we pray for his family. Comfort all who are mourning the loss of loved ones on this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah, prayer. We bring before you, O oh God, those who have died in faith and now see you face to face. Thank you for all that they meant to us in this life and the example that they were for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We bring before you, O oh God, our lives and all that we are, including our successes and our failures. We thank you for the gift of life and ask that we may get to know you more deeply day after day. And we say together, merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And also with you. We sing our offertory hymn. Then 
and sings my song, my Savior God's to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly from the trees. I look down from a lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior calls to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art! Then sing. My soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. You have revealed your glory as the glory of your Son and of the Holy Spirit. Three persons, equal in majesty, undivided in splendour, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be worshipped and adored. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death, we celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Oh, 
Almighty God, may we who have received this Holy Communion worship you with lips and lives, proclaiming your majesty, and finally see you in your eternal glory, holy and eternal trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. We sing our concluding hymn. Tight.